The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord.
praise the Lord.
Great are you, Lord. Shout. 
worship him in this moment. Call out unto you, Lord. Praise you when we worship you. Just pray in the spirit. Sing it, 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 it
you meet every need that we have you meet our needs this morning Lord Lord we lay down all our burdens this morning we lay down everything everything that distracts us from you we take a hold of your word this morning Lord that it is well with our souls this morning awesome presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord speaks in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Anyone got a word this morning in the worship? If God was speaking to the body this morning. Anyone here or anyone on Zoom? the communion as well please um, I just saw when we were started worship uh, that these rocks in front of us were being smashed and I just saw rocks breaking something yeah I just um, t- at the end when we were in the free worship um, I just really felt the, that his yoke is um, easy and his burden is light and we need to push off any heaviness that's coming upon us because his his burden is not heavy his burden is light and his yoke is easy amen cast off every burden Father God Every burden, Father God, everything that's not of you, every yoke of oppression, we break its power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We receive that word right now, Lord. Lord, that you break every heavy yoke right now off your people in the name of Jesus. You break them, you smash them off, Lord. Lord, you died on the cross so that we'll be set free. Amen. I just saw angels being dispatched from heaven and they just had um, like gold boxes, gold gifts in their hands. Everyone's got their communion. <laughs> yeah, I'll start anyway. I'll start with this verse. 
in John 6, 33, said, For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. That's powerful. It gives life to the world, to the whole world. It gives life to us. So as we take this body this morning, Lord, Lord, this bread gives life to us. Lord, it is a covenant that you made with your body. This morning as we take off this body, Lord, we see your resurrection power coming through this body into our mortal bodies this morning. Raise us up, Father God. Raise us up, Lord, from all the worldly things out of our bodies, Lord. Lord, sickness and disease does not belong to us as we see this on the cross this morning. Life is not sickness, Lord. So we curse the root of sickness this morning out of our bodies. We curse the very root and we curse the generational roots that have come down the line. Today we take covenant with you, Lord, as we eat of this body right now, that we are in covenant one with you, Jesus. So we take off this body right now and eat it and we have life today. Amen. Lord, for your everlasting covenant that you made with your very blood that poured out of your wounds, your blood that flowed out of you, that it's not a waste, that your blood paid the price for us, for every sin and every sickness, Lord. Lord, doesn't matter what sin, that Lord, that is covering us this morning as we drink of this cup, we come and we belong to you that this will wash us, cleanse us, make us holy just like you, Lord. As you live in us, you breathe in us. As we drink of your cup, we become one with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Get it ready to take our offering, Janet. Give to the Lord, amen. David gave a lot <laughs> to the Lord because, you know, what doesn't it cost him? He said he was not going to give. We need to give to the Lord for his purpose and his plans. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless, Father God, everyone who pours out, Father God, there, even give to the finances of this church, Lord. Lord, we ask today that you will bless them, Father God. Lord, the ones who are giving online, Father God, Lord, Lord, and giving, Father God, and with the, that heart today, we lift up those tides up to you, Lord. Lord, we, we lift up the whole lump today, Lord. Lord, to you, Jesus, as as, Lord, you receive it today, that they will get, Father God, a double portion, Lord, in everything that they've given, Father God. We bless those tithes this morning, and it will go into good ground for your kingdom purpose. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So don't forget our prayer meetings are on every morning from 6 to 7.30, and on Saturdays till 12 midday so come along at any time if you've been on there you've seen and you have heard the breakthroughs that people are having amazing breakthroughs like what a what an awesome presence to come into the lord every morning and wake up even if you don't have your hair done and your makeup done you can still turn it on and you can still come in the spirit and be in <laughs> be in there with him amen um, Yara's got an awesome message this morning. It's always awesome. Powerful woman of God. Pray for the pastors. They're always, you know, praying for you guys and standing in the gap. So if you haven't got anyone else to pray for, just lift them up and pray for them. Um, they need your prayers. Their families need your prayers. And before Yara comes, if anybody's got a word for this morning, um, not like Psalms 119, but <laughs> this morning only. Um, the 
word I got, you were made for him and him only. And that your fulfillment is not in the world, but in him and always will be in him. Amen. Powerful. Thank you, Anna. Amen. Wow, what a powerful anointing. You know, I could feel the anointing from the singing in the other room this morning. It was touching my heart and I wanted to cry. It was going through the wall. How's that? Wow. Our God is just amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. Hallelujah. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. You are just awesome. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And we can draw encouragement this morning from the men and women of old that went through the battles, went through a difficult situation, but drawn strength from you. And we can draw our strength from you this morning because you're an unfailing God. Everything the enemy meant for evil, you turn it around and you bring good out of it. Hallelujah. So we rejoice today. We rejoice as we listen to your word that we've heard time and time again. But I thank you, Holy Spirit, for revelation, revelation truth that will come this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Mighty God, it's just so great to have you here. Hallelujah. Otherwise, I'd be talking to the wall. I've entitled this message, for I will yet praise Him. I will yet praise Him. Amen. You mightn't be in that place yet, but like the psalmist says, for I will yet praise Him, my Saviour and my God. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1, David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock of escape from Saul and my fortress in the wilderness and my deliverer, my God, my rock. In him will I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my saviour. You save me from violence. I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. For the waves of death enveloped me. The torrents of destruction made me afraid. The situation that David was facing made him afraid. The cords of shoal were entangling me. I encountered the snares of death. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried to my God and he heard my voice. From his temple, my cry came into his ears. And I just love that, that relationship that David had with the living God. That relationship, it doesn't say that he ran to Jonathan. It doesn't say that he ran to Saul. It doesn't say that he ran to somebody. It talks about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He said, the Lord is my rock of escape from Saul. My fortress in the wilderness, my deliverer, my God, my rock. Wow, what a relationship. He's not looking anywhere else for his deliverance. He's not looking anywhere else for his help. He's looking to God. Amen. One way, Jesus. Whatever it is that you're going through this morning, be like David of all. Keep your eyes on the rock. Keep your eyes on the deliverer, on the fortress, the hiding place that he found in God. 
And I just love it. I call on the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. Amen. Amen. The enemy wants to take you out. He wants to discourage you, wants to depress you, wants to oppress you. But David found the rock of his salvation. He went to the rock. He called on the name of the Lord when he was in his distress. Glory to the Lord, for I will yet praise him. Amen. I will yet praise him. No matter what dilemma stands before you. The Word of God says that the righteous have their troubles, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. We're not exempt from it. Amen. It's like you go through one battle and you think that's over and bang. I remember this preacher he used to preach and he used to say, this woman came up to him and said, every time I press in there with God, it's, it's like the enemy comes in. And he said, welcome to life. <laughs> Welcome to life. Hallelujah. The Lord is a very present help in times of trouble. Whatever trouble that you're going through, whatever trouble that you're finding yourself in, the Lord is a very present help. He's a very present help. He's right there. Glory to the Lord. He is there. And the songs that were sung this morning, it's like, yeah, yes, amen. Hallelujah. The words that were in the song, I was like, wow, this is just awesome. It was just so powerful, the words. Powerful. And I'm thinking about David of old. What a relationship he had with God. You know, he wasn't a perfect man, but he had such a close relationship with the living God. My rock, my refuge, my shield, my horn, my salvation, my stronghold, my deliverer. It was everything. God was everything to David. He was everything. He found delight. He found satisfaction in the living God. He ran to him when he was in distress, when he was in trouble, when he didn't know which way to go, when he was between a rock and a hard place. God was everything to him. And that's the place you and I need to come. That when trouble comes, when something comes up, that we're not falling apart on the inside. And I'm speaking this message to me this morning also. When something happens that we don't fall apart on the inside, but we stay strong in our God because He's the glory and the lifter of our head. Hallelujah. In Psalm 18, verse 18, David said, They confronted and came upon me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay and my support. The Lord was my stay and my support. When the enemy came against me in the day of my calamity, the Lord was my stay and my support. He supported me. It doesn't say that my friends were there. It says the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord was my stay and my support. Hallelujah. He was right there. You know, your friends may not be there when you need help, but the Lord is your stay and your support. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. He's your stay and your support. He's your stabiliser. He's your anchor. He's your rock. Hallelujah. Amen. That gets me all excited. He's my stay and my support. Hallelujah. How awesome is that? For I will yet praise Him, my Saviour and my God. Hallelujah. You're going to go through a time of testing, but it's going to end with a song of praise. Amen. Amen. Yay. Hallelujah. It's going to end with a song of praise. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we think we're never going to come out of that place. Hallelujah. Like Ken and Kathy, they were in the wilderness for a long time. And sometimes you begin to think that's your lot in life. And that's it. And you can't see beyond that. But the day came when they came out of the wilderness. Hallelujah. And the Word of God says, Who is this coming up out of the wilderness and leaning on her beloved? Leaning, leaning, resting. Amen. That means not burden, but resting. Wow. Hallelujah. And that's what happens, isn't it, when we come out of the wilderness? We're not leaning on our own understanding, but we're acknowledging him in all our ways and he's making straight our path. He made a way in the wilderness. Amen. We didn't know how he was going to do it. 
But he's the way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. Hallelujah. What a way maker. Amen. He's my stay and my support. Hallelujah. You know, if someone says to you, is anyone supporting you? The Lord is my stay and my support. Hallelujah. There's no reason to fall apart. There's no reason to get anxious. There's no reason to fret. The Lord is my stay and my support. Hallelujah. Such encouraging words. It's enough to put me up on the Marunga tree like the Sri Lankans say. Hallelujah. Be swinging off those, off those branches like me, Jane, you, Tarzan. <laughs> Hallelujah. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. I just love how the men and women of all praise the Lord and watching God's hand of the deliverance coming and bringing them out of the darkness, bringing them out of those places. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Ken and Kathy, I just see all these money bags just being poured in front of you. Yeah. There was two of them as well. Amen. It's like... Like she, she money, is it her, his, her money, she money, his money, however they say it. Her bag, his bag. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. And I just love how Moses gave glory to the Lord. They sang this song, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider or its chariot has he thrown into the sea. And it goes on to say, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. This is my God, and I will praise him. Oh, glory to the Lord, like ownership. This is my God. I love it. Putting an ownership on the Lord. This is my God. He's talking about my God. He's talking about my God. Oh, hallelujah, my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. In Exodus 15, 4, it says, Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. And Moses goes on to say in verse 6, Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Oh, you didn't hear that? Your right hand was majestic in power. Hallelujah. This is mighty God. Your right hand was majestic in power. Your right hand shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. In the greatness of your majesty. Majesty and power. Wow, this is about an awesome God making a way. Making a way where there was absolute no way. Our God. We're talking about our God. We're talking about my God this morning. Hallelujah. There's no one like Jehovah. There's no one like Jehovah. No one like our God. What a mighty and awesome God he is. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God. What a mighty God he is this morning. Glory, glory to your name. Hallelujah. This this light. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Word for this family, for Tash and Bill and this young man, Josh. Hallelujah. Through our God, we shall do valiantly because it is he who treads down our enemies. Amen. 
The Lord treads down your enemies this morning. I just see the Lord's going to unravel, unfold. He's going to bring his purposes and his plans to pass. And I just see that there's something on the way, something awesome. And I just see, Josh, I just see the Lord opening up your heart, Josh. And I just see a young man with the word of God. And it's a word of authority, a word uh, that's anointed, a word of power, a message. God is going to raise you up and you are going to be mighty in the land. God's going to raise you up and you're going to have such a word for the rejected, such a word for those ones that are broken, that are despised, that are just so neglected collected and uh, being betrayed. You're going to have such a word. I see the Lord's put the word of the Lord inside of your mouth and you're going to see God doing an awesome and a mighty thing. God has not isolated you. He loves you. He's positioning you and he's raising you up. He's going to raise you up to be a mighty man of valor and you're going to see the enemies slain that have been around you. The enemies of deceit, the enemy of lie, enemy of discouragement, the enemy that would come to oppress you. You're going to see those enemies defeated. I just see this. Then God's got his hand upon this precious family there's something special he's got his hand upon you and I just see a mother and father's heart coming forth and I just see many children just around you and the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage hallelujah praise you Jesus mighty mighty God can someone enlarge the names on the uh, zoom this morning oh here we'll look at this yeah praise you Lord Debbie, Debbie Jones from Melbourne. Hallelujah. A mighty woman of the Spirit. A mighty woman of the Spirit. I just see changes. There's some, some changes that are coming, changes around the corner. I just see it's like one door shutting, another door getting ready to open. God has heard your prayers. Your prayers have come before his ears. It has reached him. And God is making a way for you where there is no way. I just see restoration, restoration. Debbie, it's like the years that the locusts have eaten. God is going to bring stability. He's going to bring peace in your family. I just see things are going to fall into place. There's been a frustration. There's, there's been disillusion. There's been a lot of discouragement and distress. But the Lord is going to sort it all out. And something good is going to come out of this whole situation. Hallelujah. You're going to praise the Lord. You're going to praise the Lord again because God is with you. He's mighty. He's mighty to deliver, mighty to save. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. And in Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendour, doing wonders? Exodus 15, verse 19. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Dry ground. What a miracle is that? God made a way, hallelujah, where there was no way. You didn't know which way to go. You couldn't go anyway because you couldn't go backward. And you couldn't go forward, but God, but God, but God, but God made a way, but God made a way. And the people walked the dry ground in the midst of the sea. The waters were parted. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Then Miriam, the prophetess, sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Hallelujah. For I will yet praise him. The horse and rider have been thrown into the sea. Glug, 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 glug. Amen. You look for your enemies and you will not find them. You look for your enemies and you will not find them. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Just see this young lady here. You're a beautiful princess. You're a beautiful princess and I just see the Lord just touching your heart and I just see a heart, a mother's heart on the inside of you and God is going to raise you up and I just see that there's going to be many that are going to be just jealous and envious of what God is instilling inside of you. You're going to be a woman that's going to stand in the counsel of God. You're going to be a woman that's going to know the heart of God, the Father heart of God. You're going to be a woman that's going to just speak the word of God. There's going to come such clarity out of your mouth, such an anointing, such a power such a fire and the word of God is going to flow out of your mouth God is raising you up in the midst of the turmoil in the midst of everything that is happening around about you and sometimes I see that in the midst of circumstances like the enemy wants you to drown in the circumstances but the Lord is lifting you up because he's got a purpose and a plan for you and he's going to further develop that plan and I just see you being a woman that others are going to come to they're going to come with their sins and their secrets with their problems and you're going to have wisdom and counsel in how to 
answer them and you're going to stand tall and strong. I just see the Lord's going to give you strength of character as you press in there with God. You're going to get strength of character and you're going to be able to stand when others are falling, when others are fainting because of the turbulence of the testing and trial. But you're going to stand. People are going to come to you. You're not going to be one that's going to be rejected, but people are going to seek you out because you're going to have the word of the Lord. It's going to be sharp. It's going to be powerful. And I just see the, there's a prophetic anointing there. You're going to speak oracles and the prophetic word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Hallelujah. For I will yet praise him. That's exciting because something is happening. Something is going on. I I will yet praise him. I will yet praise him. Hallelujah. What about that doctor's report? What about sons and daughters and grandchildren and great-grandchildren? For I will yet praise him. I will yet praise him. Glory to the Lord. I just love the story about Jehoshaphat. This, this is so powerful about the battle. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, and they rose early in the morning. Early risers. They rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, he had a word for the, for the people, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe and remain steadfast to his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy priestly garments as they went out before the army. This is sending out the singers before the army. What a dangerous place. Sending out the singers when the enemy's coming against them. So the singers were sent out saying, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and loving kindness and due forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, see, they had to do their part. We have to do our part. When they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the men of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, who came against Judah and they were self-slaughtered. They were self-slaughtered. You just stood back and watched the salvation of God. The battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Imagine that. End of story. They fought against each other. That was it. Finished. Amen. You won't have to fight this battle. Take your position and stand firm and see the salvation of your God. Hallelujah. Taking their position and watching God move. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like a set of dominoes or whatever. Watching God move. Stand back. Take your hands off the situation. I'm speaking to somebody. Take your hands off the situation. Take your hands off that control wheel. Stand back and watch God move. There's times that you and I cannot do anything about a situation. When you pray, stand back and watch God move. Watch God move. But do your part. Do your part. Whatever it is that you have to do, do your part. And I just love it. All these dead bodies. Amen. Divine intervention. Hallelujah. We didn't even have to pick up a sword or anything. The singers went out and began to sing and praise God. What a weapon of warfare. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise. What a weapon. Praise is the power of heaven. Glory. And the Lord enriched them with the spoil of the enemy. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 25. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take the spoil, they found among them much cattle, goods, garments and precious things which they took for themselves more than they could carry away. So much they were three days in gathering the spoil. Three days. Amen. You'd need a few trailers for that, Ken. Three days. Imagine that. No, No enemy there. You've got so much stuff and you don't have to fight over it. You don't have to fight. There's something for everybody. There's so much, so much. I've got to give it away. So much spoil, hallelujah, from the battle.
battle after the battle. Glory. It was more than they could carry away. And I just love it how they just didn't finish just taking all the spoil away and that's it. For us four and no more and don't worry about God anymore. It says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 26, on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Baraka. That means blessing. They, there they bless the Lord. There they bless the Lord. Amen. There they bless the Lord for everything God had done for them, delivered them, pour out his blessing upon them. Amen. They bless the Lord. They remembered the Lord. Because sometimes you and I can be going through a battle and we can, we can forget to bless God and to thank him for what he's brought us through. They assembled in the valley of Baraka and they blessed the Lord on the fourth day. Amen. Hallelujah for what God had done in their lives. I just love it. Amen. God is just such an awesome God. He's such a mighty, mighty God. And so that was one battle that um, divine intervention. And, you know, David went through many, many battles. And I know that I'm speaking to somebody here today. And in Psalm 13, verse 1, we know this one. David said, how long will you forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I lay up cares within me and have sorrow in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy exalt himself over me? Four times. How long will you forget me? So David's not in a very good place. He's saying to the Lord, how long is is this going to go on for? How long are you going to forget about me? And I love it. I love it that he goes to God. He goes to God when he's going through his difficult times. How long must I lay up care within my heart and have sorrow in my heart day after day? So it was something that was going on. It wasn't just a once off. It was was continuing on. How long, Lord, will you forget me? How long is this going to go on for? How long am I going to see the light at the end of the tunnel? How long am I going to go through this? And so he was in a difficult place. And he says in verse 3, Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lighten the eyes of my faith to behold your face in the pitch-like darkness. Lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy says I have prevailed over him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am shaken. And verse 5, but I have trusted, lean on, and been confident in your mercy and loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice and be in high spirits in your salvation. And I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Hallelujah. He's acknowledging that he's going to sing to the Lord because he's dealt with him bountifully. Hallelujah. And I love it with with the Psalms. And they start off, they're in a difficult place. They start off and they're not in a good place at all. By the time the Psalm finishes, it's like they speak the answer out. Things are different. Things are different. You know, Jesus knew about being rejected. He knew about sorrows. Because in Isaiah 53 verse 3, It says about Jesus that he was despised and rejected. Forsaken by men, he was a man of sorrows and pains, acquainted with grief and sickness. So whatever it is that you're going through, Jesus was acquainted with that. A man of sorrows. So when David was talking here that... How long must he lay up cares within his heart and have sorrow in his heart day after day? <clears throat> Jesus was a man of sorrow, so he knew what it was like to feel sorrow in the heart, to feel that rejection. <clears throat> but he laid his life down for each one of us, didn't he? <clears throat> and David is saying to the Lord, consider and answer me. Because he didn't want the enemy to prevail over what he was going through, to prevail over him. 
divine intervention. Don't gloat over me, my enemy. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times we're in that place, aren't we? Don't gloat over me, my enemy. The Lord's going to be my light in this situation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light. Amen. We don't have to be afraid because the Lord is right there. Long afflictions try our patience. Amen. And patience, one of the fruit of the Spirit. When it, when it goes on and on and on, long suffering. That brings the true colours to the surface, doesn't it? We see what we're made of when we're going through long suffering. It somehow finds its way up. It emerges. Patience. Patience is a virtue. Hallelujah. Faith and patience inherit the promises of God. Patience. Tribulation worketh patience. So all the tribulation you've been going through, it's been working patience. It's been doing something on the inside of you. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. There was a part, I remember when I was having um, my kidney star waiting for the operation and um, these words so spoke to me from, from all of this song, but I've only wrote a few words down. When I am down and oh, my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am still and weighty in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. Amen. <clears throat> yes, and, and doesn't he come and sit a while? He comes and sits with us. He talks with us and walks with us along life's narrow way. And Michael and Lorna would know the Lord. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. To see the, the word of the Lord is just embedded in your heart. The word of the Lord, the promises, the promises. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. <clears throat> in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. And this is somebody who's having a bit of a grumble. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My course is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Amen. Why do you say and complain that your way is hidden from the Lord? And sometimes we can feel like that, can't we? God, what about me? What about me? It's like you're blessing everyone else. You're coming through, answers making a way. What about me? Sometimes it's like you feel like you've been left on the shelf. Long suffering. <laughs> long suffering. How long, oh Lord? How long, oh Lord? How long are you going to forget me? How long am I going to stay in this situation, in this circumstance? How long? How long, oh God? And be sorrowful every day. Looking to God, how long, how long? And then you see somebody else and it's like, they're getting married. They're getting married and I'm still on the shelf like an old maid. <laughs> how long, oh Lord, will you forget about me? How long am I going to have sorrows in my heart? What about me? What about me, Lord? And we think, God, you've truly forgotten all about me. Well, honestly, you know, when my, when my husband left me, Mike's husband now, when he left me, and um, I was in my 30, early, very early 30s probably, and I was thinking, my whole life is wasted my whole life, God will never be able to restore my life. And, and it, it's like, you know, the second coming, you know, in, in those days we just believed Jesus is going to come and I'm never going to get married again. And it's like, well, I'm married for 31 years now after all that. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what are we fretting about? What are we worried about? 
Amen. God is an awesome God. He fulfills every one of His promises for you. Amen. For you, for you. You're an individual. You're special. Sometimes we think that God's overlooking us, but He's taking us through some situations. He's taking us through some things. Strength of character. Strength of character to strengthen us. That we lean on Him. Like David, make God your everything. My rock, my saviour, my deliverer, my fortress. Make him your everything. Your everything. That when things happen, you're not going to fall apart. You know, I love how the psalmist was lifted up out of the pit. Out of the pit. And when you've been in the pit of depression, a pit of sickness, a pit of infirmity, a pit of loneliness, a pit of rejection. And Psalm 40 verse 3. And the psalmist goes on to say, and he has put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. You're out of that pit. You're not in that pit anymore. A new song, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear, revere and worship and put their trust and confident reliance in the Lord. Many are going to see what that is a witness. That is a testimony. Hallelujah. When you come out of the pit of depression, when you come out of a pit of a broken relationship, when you come out of a pit out of bankruptcy, it's going to be a testimony what God has done in your life. A testimony. Hallelujah. Not going to be a moany, but a testimony. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Notice that God is the source of our praise. He puts the new song in our mouth. Our deliverance results not only in praise to God, but in testimony to others. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Amen. And will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Judges chapter 5, verse 1, on the day Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang this song, when the princes in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings, listen, you rulers. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. Hallelujah. I just love it. Men and women of old that would praise the Lord in song when he brought them through the battle, when they had victory. God is praised in song. Hallelujah. Is there any Mary? Let him sing. Let him sing. Let him praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 3. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from his hands. And there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power. Was the hiding place of his power. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. Deuteronomy 32, 1, Moses' words. I love this. Moses said, listen, you heavens, and I will speak and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drip as the rain, my speech trickle as the dew, as droplets on the fresh grass and as the showers on the vegetation. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness without injustice, righteous and just is he. Hallelujah. How refreshing. How refreshing is that word. The commentary compares this word to rain and showers which come from above to make the earth fruitful and accomplish that for which they are sent. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalm 126, it says, Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You go out weeping and you come back rejoicing and praising God. Amen. You go out one way and you come back another way. Hallelujah. Their present anguish will be more than compensated by the joy of God, bringing their sheaves of ripened grain to the barn. The principle applies also, of course, in the spiritual realm. Those who live sacrificially for the spread of the gospel may endure privation, 
But what is that compared to the joy of seeing souls saved? Amen, of seeing souls saved. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. How many times have you and I been there where weeping's tarried for the night, but joy came in the morning. There was a new day, a new dawning. Glory to God. And the last scripture here is Psalm 118, verse 15. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. This is what can be heard in the camp after a battle. Hallelujah. All the earth shall praise your name. Let's stand up this morning. Hallelujah. All the earth shall praise your name. All the earth shall praise your name. We worship and adore you today. Oh, we lift up your name this morning. We want to bless your name. We bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I thank your Holy Spirit this morning that you will touch those ones on Zoom. Touch those ones on Zoom this morning. Holy Spirit, that you will touch them. That you will minister your peace, your love, Lord God. You will strengthen them. And I thank you that their assurance is in you. You are the rock of their salvation. You are going to bring them through. You are going to bring Rochelle through. You are going to bring Paul through. You are going to bring her daughters through, Father God. You are going to do exceedingly abundantly above, beyond what they would even ask or think or dream of, Father God. You are going to move mightily, Father God. And I thank you, Father, for Rob and Deanna. The hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You'll strengthen every person on Zoom and beyond Zoom this morning. You are the way maker. You are the way maker, Father. I thank you for jobs. I thank you for jobs, for provision, Father God, for for, uh, rental places at affordable prices, that you will bless people financially. I'll call finances in from the north and the south and the east and the west. I break that spirit of poverty right now in the name of Jesus. I break its power and its hold. And I declare you're a God of abundance, the God of abundance, this, Lord God, that you lay up the riches, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. So I thank you, Lord God, for finances, for investment. Finances for investment, Lord God, that you will move. You're the way maker, Father God. I lift up every family represented in this place, Lord God, that you will breathe your resurrection life and power upon them, Lord God. And they will walk by faith, not by sight, Father God, that you're taking them into a new realm of your glory, Lord God. You're going to cause the rains of heaven to come down and rain upon their land, Lord God. I thank you for breakthrough, breakthrough in their, in their health, Father God, breakthrough in their finances, Father Breakthrough in relationships, breakthrough in their families, Father God, that you will move mightily by your spirit. Hallelujah. Shannon, you're a man of God. You're a man of God. I just see the Lord bringing you to the forefront. He's bringing you to the forefront. God is doing an awesome and a mighty work. And I just see, I just see uh, trailers behind you and the trailers are full of gold. And it's like gold, gold, gold for the body of Christ, the gold, the word of God that you're going to bring out of your mouth. It's going to touch people. It's going to break yokes. It's going to bring such encouragement. I just see that God stamped upon you Barnabas. And the word Barnabas is son of encouragement. You are a son of encouragement. And God is going to restore all the years that the locusts have eaten. God's going to bring restoration. You're going to see the power and the glory of God. And chicks, you are such a giver. You are such a servant's heart. And I just see that God is going to be there when you're going to need help, when you're going to cry out to God. He's going to come and he's going to help and he's going to move on your behalf. The hills are going to melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. God is going to give you cheeks. It's going to be pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? Oh, glory to God. And, and I just see that cheeks, God is going to bless you. He's going to bless you so much that people are going to be envious of you. They are going to be jealous of you. And I just see like Joseph coat. It's like you've got the coat, a beautiful coat. And people are going to want to pull that off of you. So you've got to guard what God has entrusted to you. Guard it with everything that is within you. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. Glory to the Lord. Eli, just see, you're going to take some joint steps. You're going to take some joint steps. And 
I just see there's been some baggage that you've been carrying, baggage from the past, baggage from even when you was a little boy, five years old, I get that year, five years old, and it's like things you've had stuffed in there, and I just see you're just done with that, you're finished with that. It's like the Word of God says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, but now I'm a man, and it's like putting away the childish things and taking on that responsibility, taking on that accountability, and I just see those giant boots on you, giant boots, and you're taking some giant steps because like Paul the Apostle said in Philippians, I can do all things because it is Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And I just see a new day and a new hour. Glory to the Lord. And, and Hannah, store up your treasures in heaven when a rust and moth can get to it. And I just see that the Lord is watching over his word to bring it to pass. You're not, you're not always going to be in the situation that you're in right now. It's going to change. It's not always going to be like that forever and a day. You're not going to have sorrow in your heart day after day. But God is going to bring change. And as you seek him first, his kingdom, his righteousness, all these other things shall be added unto you. All these other things. And I just see the time and hour is going to come when you're you're going to have a house. You're going to have another car. Hallelujah. I just see God is going to just pour out his blessing upon you. And then it's like, you're not going to be a pauper, but you're going to be, I just see wealthy woman, wealthy woman of God, wealthy woman of God. Hallelujah. I just see you. You're going to be rich in the, in the natural and you're going to be rich in the spirit, the richness of God spirit. It's like you're going to take his presence with you. It's like an entourage, the presence of God. You and God are the majority. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming, everyone. We love you. Have an awesome, awesome day.